Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and today we're at the Heart Valve Summit in Chicago, Illinois and I am honored and thrilled to be here with Dr. Kevin Akala, who's a cardiac surgeon at Florida Hospital in Orlando, Florida. Many of you know this man, he's helped many patients in our community with incredibly successful outcomes including patients like Denise Ring. Dr. Akala, thanks for being here with oh, me today. Adam, it's great to be here as always. Thank you, it's good to see you. I can't tell you how much uh, this means to our patients, what you're doing, it's just incredible. From a grassroots standpoint, they can talk and interact online and chat groups and different things with patients that really can empathize with them. So thank you for all you're doing because it's just been incredible. Well, thank you. Now let's get to a question that we get yes. from a lot of the patients. Mm -hmm. I get emails, I get texts, I get uh, phone calls. Adam. I'm going in for surgery. I need to meet with a surgeon and I don't know what questions I should ask them. So being that you're a surgeon, what is it that patients should ask their surgeons when they go in for that consult? I think that's a, it's a great question because you know, it's not like taking your car and to get fixed with the oil change. You just take it in good faith that you know, it's going to get fixed and they're going to do the right thing. And the, the surgeons are going to do the right thing, but I think to put patients' minds at ease, it's very important for them to not only ask the questions, but uh, as like with, through your book and through your website, they can actually interact with patients who have had the surgery, which may uh, inspire them, if you will, to ask the appropriate questions to where they feel comfortable. I don't think there's any one or two questions that, 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 are, that have to be asked so much as I think the patient needs to, one, understand what they're going to have done as well as why they're having it done. What is the, the pathologic process? Is it a stenotic valve that doesn't open or close normally? Is it an insufficient valve that leaks because it, it's torn? And so once they understand it, I think then they can comprehend some of their treatment options. If they don't understand why they're there, it's going to be tough to one, ask questions, but two, understand what their treatment options are. I think one of the most important things is to ask you know, what are their options, uh, whether it's surgery, whether it's continued medical therapy, whether it's they're not quite ready to have their surgery done or not uh, is, is very important. Uh, whether they're emergent or can be more elective because if they have things with the work or they're with their children or, or with other personal circumstances that they need to, to resolve, then uh, you know, I think that's important. Do I have to have it done right away? The other option, of course, is uh, do I need to have, if it's particularly a mitral valve, can it be repaired or can it be replaced or do you do valve repair and, and what are the various approaches? A lot of the aortic valve surgery can now be done with smaller or limited access incisions. Is that appropriate for me as a patient? And if not, uh, then why is that? So that I can understand. That, not that it's right or wrong, but so they can understand. The best thing that you can do is have it when a patient comes into the uh, hospital that day is to be comfortable and to be at, at ease and at peace with what they're having to do. Because it is a huge thing and it's, it's very scary for patients and I think that a lot of these concerns uh, can be alleviated with again uh, asking the right questions as you've said. And so uh, there's not a definitive question or, or something that everyone has to answer because it's very individualized. So I think that, again, just asking questions, writing them down, coming to the office or in the hospital uh, with these questions, uh, I think is, is, uh, is the, the key point. Yeah, you mentioned a couple great things. You mentioned writing down your questions mm -hmm. before you come in to see the surgeon, because it can be uncomfortable Absolutely. when you're talking to somebody in a white lab coat mm -hmm. and they're talking Absolutely. about opening up your heart, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever had anybody tape record the sessions so that they don't forget what was what commu was communicated during your consult? Yeah, I have. And it's uh, a lot of times that's more important if they have family members that aren't there or can't be there. And we either will do a telephone conference or FaceTime with them or whatever they feel comfortable with it that is fine with me. If they, if they want to tape record the, the, the question answer session, I think that's fine as well because a lot of times they'll get home and they will forget what they even asked and, and, or what was the answer because it's, it's a lot going through their mind. And oftentimes patients, because of the capabilities of the Internet, which is good, because patients do look into other options and have a better understanding, but it's sometimes bad because the patients are super saturated with all this information. 
So oftentimes they come in with this preconceived idea, this is what they're going to get, which it might not even correspond to really the treatment options. So it, it is good to look on the internet, but I tell patients don't overdo it because there is some marketing, there's some, there's some other vested interests. There's uh, also because uh, oftentimes they'll get super saturated with information. Yeah. The final point I'll bring up, Dr. Akala, is this concept of being uncomfortable when you leave a doctor's visit. And maybe you're uncomfortable with what you hear, or maybe you're uncomfortable with the clinician. Do you ever recommend, or would you think, would you advise patients that if, if they're not comfortable, maybe they get a second opinion? Absolutely, Adam, because, you know, again, it's, they, they've got to be comfortable with what they're getting into. Uh, if there's ever any doubt, uh, I always encourage a second opinion. Uh, in addition to that, if they're uncertain, uh, they always spend time with, with my assistant as well as my administrative assistant, so they have opportunity to come back and say, wait a minute, can I ask him a couple more questions? Uh, but also, uh, I always tell them, look, if you want to come back and sit down again, you want to bring your, your daughter or son from out of town or your spouse isn't with you, come back and let's, let's do this again. Because, again, it's so important to me, particularly oftentimes these are elective surgical procedures, which there are other options, or they may want to find, uh, you know, some other type of uh, opinion, uh, which I think is good because at the end of the day, I want someone when they do come into the hospital and they are ready for their heart surgery, uh, again to be at ease and at peace with what they're going to do and feel comfortable. There's no questions patients do better when they bought in, if you will, uh, emotionally and, and and approach this enthusiastically, not only with the surgical procedure, but then in the convalescence period. They're not going, my goodness, why did I do this? Mm. Uh, so I think that it improves not only the way they enter surgery, but also the way they convalesce through surgery. Well, Dr. Akala, thank you for the great responses, the coaching you um, just provided, all of our patient community. Yeah. And I just want to thank you for everything you're doing at Florida Hospital in Orlando. Thanks so much it's for my, being with us. It's my privilege. We've got a great team. And again, it's just uh, we're proud to be a part of what you've done here and develop because it's just incredible. Well, thank you so much. And as we always say here, Keep on ticking. Uh, my pleasure.